he and he and him and they and they. Oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> this is the Grow <laughs> Business Podcast oh, I, I, with that Corey Mosley. From the podcast with Barbara. Wow. People don't know how loud it is. It's just like blaring in my ear. <laughs> you, went on a, you went on that rant. When did I go on that? That, um, that episode with Barbara. Oh, which rant? <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> that, that I did be, listen to that. That could be right. anything. Who, who knows what rant I went right. on? <laughs> rants are abundant. Speaking of rants, <laughs> you are in the right place. <laughs> I want to shout out Chris Davis. He's He sent me a picture uh, of him listening to the podcast in his car. And uh, he's got, you know, took the screenshot of it being on his car. And he wrote, you're very entertaining. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Shout out that's to Chris. That's what we try to be, folks. Yeah, that's right. Shout out to Chris. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're in the right place. Uh, yeah. If you if you think you hit the wrong dial, you didn't. You are uh, listening to the Grow Business Podcast. Yes. I'm your host, Corey Mosley. All right. Back in the house and the place to be. He uh, took a week off, but he can't stay away. LG007 is here. Voice of reason. It's good to be back, of course. Good yes. to see you. Yes. And of course, um, a minute and 20 out of the gate, doing well. Like, might I say, doing well. Willie H is on the boards. Hit the buttons, William. Yes. All right. We're off to a good start. I love it. Yes, indeed. Yeah, because it was a little rocky uh, <laughs> last week with Barbara. And shout out to Barbara Smith, who, who was co hosting in, in uh, Lon's absence. And uh, you know Barbara. I, uh, yeah. we, I know who she is. From, We've okay. never formally met yeah she was former in it she was kind of had gone off to do some things mm -hmm. before you came into like the speaking mm -hmm. nsa world yeah. um but they're, they're you know, familiar we, with we didn't prep now. her at all so <laughs> as 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 Will, willie h was dropping the <laughs> she's like whoa, 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 whoa what is that what happened there and we dropped yours she's like is that coming from the ceiling <laughs> Mercy. yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so uh but no shout out to her Fantastic uh, thanks girl. for sitting in we've got another great show for you here we want to you know always start by uh by thanking everybody thanking everybody for their uh listenership their visitorship if they uh watch us on youtube but if you stream us across all the avenues as usual uh apple Podcasts, google play amazon music iHeartRadio, um spotify of course mm -hmm. got a shout out spotify so mm -hmm. We are thrilled to have you back here. And again, we're focused on doing one thing, helping you grow your business. We got another great show for you today. Lon, we are going back to the pros and cons okay, that good. we had done a few episodes ago that we had sure. done for a few few of those. And um, any guesses on, on what we're talking about today? Um, how to pick your lottery numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you can resolve that, <laughs> that's a show I would, I would, I would exactly. pay to listen to. It. That's exactly. Uh, I if think I we can get would. those, you know, because we've all played that. What would we do if we hit the lottery? All right. And everybody knows I say the same thing. If I know you already, you're pretty safe. <laughs> You'll get the new number. Right. Because everyone else will hear, do, do, do. <laughs> the number you have reached is no longer in service. I say, well, it's whether that. Uh -huh. Or I'm going to hire a call center right. to screen all my calls. You've, you've shared that yeah, one before. Yeah, you yeah. tell me that one. Yeah, or well, you'll right? get that one. Like Corey Mosley's right. phone. And it's like, oh, uh, yeah, I'd like to speak to Corey. Well, who's calling? <laughs> right. His mother? Oh, well, hold on. Let me, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> let me see if he's taking calls right now. <laughs> Ask her what she wants. <laughs> <laughs> Ask her if it's going to cost yeah, me yeah, money. Yeah. <laughs> Is this a courtesy call <laughs> or a cost me call? Right. right? Exactly. My Zell is broken. <laughs> well, what would you? What, what would your? Would you disappear? What would you do? Since we brought it up. Yeah, you know, there's a couple of there's a couple of long term like okay three or four week trips that I would okay. take. Yeah. Um, and I like to drive. Are you going to be accessible though? You get to the right people. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, right. people think I'm crazy. Everybody's going to do that. Right. right? You're I mean, going yeah. to have to block and tackle because mm -hmm. there's going to be long lost cousins. Right. Uh, you know, oh, Mary's son's brother's nephew. You remember mm -hmm. me? Jebediah. Right. You know, like <laughs> yeah, the answer. I already got the people like on 23andMe now that are related to me like 
one scintilla percent mm. they're related and like oh right. i think we might you know they they message me do you know this person this person right nope i don't know that mostly nope there's a lot of mostly <laughs> none of them i know well and and my qualifier is is if i already know we're related you're good if you're telling me we're related okay. Mm-mm, not so good. Well, I got to tell you, there's some people I, I am related to that I will not be taking phone calls from. So I, I don't now. I ain't going to start. So it's just nothing changes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There you go. I'm definitely not going to start now. But, you know, it's, it's interesting because you watch those stories. Mm-hmm. Um, now, thankfully, in our state, if you win over a certain amount, I think the threshold is $10 million now. Okay. Any over $10 million, you can do it anonymously. Oh, and we're only one of like I think thirteen states that actually right. allow you to get away with that, right? Um, because you know you can't. I mean, I, you hear the stories: people lined up outside people's houses, right? Like bringing their sick children, their sick mother, like right. you know, like they're lined up. At the, right. Mm, we need a new one. Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> so um, okay, but interesting. So so key key in on some trips and yeah. things. Are you still coming to do the podcast or what? Yeah, we'll like, do. I'm, I may end up doing a, like doing a Zoom podcast every once in a while. Oh wow! Oh wow! But He's, I would still come he's in. Gonna literally phone it in. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Well, well, let's just say that there's an episode, and I might be in, in Mallorca or somewhere. In, well, yeah. we'll just we'll say yeah, somewhere I'd have to travel across yeah, water. Anguilla. Right. Yeah, he's he's well, have mercy. Yeah. Or you know, actually, you know what we what we would probably do between if either one of us wanted, mm-hmm. we would create some remote episodes. Would we? Okay. Well, yeah. Like the Are came we together? in. Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Well, Willie like, H is like, excited. Right. He's team. Like, like team in. game. Right. Like, you know? <laughs> what are we number one in the Dominican? So yeah, we would make. Oh yes, we were number one. I forget where it was. Right. Like, so, where was it? No, we were. No, we were number one somewhere. I can't right. remember. Lagos. Yeah, Lagos. We were yeah. Number one in Lagos. So we yeah. would do a guest episode in Lagos. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe a couple. All right. There you go. I like so, the spirit of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well I, intended for sure. Because yeah, I was getting ready to hit him with the "till you do right by me," you know, everything, <laughs> everything, you know, it'll work out. <laughs> All right, so today, exciting, exciting, we are talking about um, business plans. Okay, but the context that I want to talk about, because you know, most of our people, you know, are already in business in some capacity. Right. So this isn't necessarily the startup show, right? This right. is the grow business show. We want you in business already, but. I want to talk about the pros and cons in the context of regularly updating. Some people yeah. are, some people, you know, are fanatics about like having everything mapped out all the time, even if something changes. Right. And, you know, there's some pluses to that. There's some minuses to that, right. you know, because I think a lot of things have changed, right? We're really in this seat of the, uh, many people are like in the seat of the pants world because so much changes. Right. I mean, it will make your head, you scan some social media, it, it will make your head explode. Right. Like the amount of ads that you're, and then of course, anytime you spend looking at the ad and I'm a studier, like I, I see a cool ad. I want to know how they structured it. Right. You know, what's the problem, how they're agitating the problem. Like from right. a marketing perspective, what's the guy's video? Is it direct? Is it more? Um, but obviously when I do that, right. it registers me, with the algorithm as somebody who, so now, you know, you watch one video about webinars right? and now everybody's mother and brother that's got a course on webinars right. is now trying to get you to do that. So, well, you, so you, you yeah. get in the webinar pipeline. Yeah. It's a right. tr- yeah. You're, you're in that pipeline. So it's, right. it's, it's tricky and it's even getting more scarier, right? Because now I've read, you know, United airlines now is going to sell advertising uh, by the person. So they will be able to, well, for the seat back televisions. Oh, okay. They will be able to serve ads to you. They'll sell advertisers the ability to serve ads to you specifically based on whatever el- all the data points are that are known about you. Directly based on your seat assignment. Yeah. Okay. So like if I'm chilling in 3C right. and they have the goods on me now, right. all of a sudden I, I might see those same ads or I'm going right. to see, you know, ads for you know, sneakers or Peter Millar ads or, right. or whatever. Cause, and it's going to be like completely terrible. That's pretty frightening. Yeah. It, it's uh, the question becomes of what, I mean, this is getting off the rails, which we're yeah. good at. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got plenty of time. <laughs> the, the question, you know, becomes at what point does it, 
I don't know if invasive is the right word, but does it become overwhelming? Yes. And yeah. And 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 maybe and annoying. And well, creepy. Yeah. It could yeah. be a little creepy. Yeah. Although the the when you think about the value of that, um, you know, you talk about three C, which is a first class seat, mm. versus fifteen C, oh. which is not right. Right. <laughs> uh, you're gonna have you're <laughs> some cer- days you're in three, some days you're in thirty three. Right. <laughs> well, depends and, on who's paying, Lon. <laughs> well, and, and to that point though, is the value of the person in that seat yep. and the economic impact of that person. Mm-hmm. You can absolutely direct more if you know that. Sure, you can have a. Huge. Well, because, again, the seat's not even the issue. It's the they're attaching they're attaching the manifest. Correct, and then cut and then customizing that. That's the real spooky thing. Shout out, right. to, shout out to Jim Ziegler, uh, well known Godfather legend. Uh, one of his favorite quotes that used to be in his advertisements that he put in the trade publications was, uh, you know, he's ten thousand dollars a day. And this was in the ad, ten thousand dollars a day plus first class seat, because the alpha dog don't fly in the back of no planes. <laughs> that was in the ad. Shout out to Jim Ziegler. <laughs> yeah, that was, That's that, right. That, that was in the ad. No, so, you're worse, baby. Uh, yeah, he's got a new book out also about speaking. Does he? Um, I think it's called. It's called. Uh, are you? Are you a? What is it? I got to look it up. Are you a speaker? Uh, why aren't you rich yet? <laughs> oh like, wow! Or, okay. Or you say you're a speaker. Why aren't you rich yet? It's yeah. Something bombastic and right. in your face, right? Because that's his. That's his deal. Uh, but that, that's that's newly out, and he's been you know making the circuit with that. So shout out to him. Good for him. All right, business plans. We're gonna yeah. talk about it. And this idea. So what do you want to do? Um, dealer's choice. Okay. Want to start with pros? Or you want to start with cons? I like, let's do the pros first. Okay. Uh, let's do the pros first. All right. All right. So let's do some obvious ones. So number one, uh, adaption to market changes, right? So okay. this now by updating your business plan and, right. and relooking at your business, this ensures your business stays relevant right. in a changing marketing environment also allows for quick responses to new opportunities and threats. Yes. Correct. Well, I, and we talk about regular, regular is going to be what, you know, what's right for you. I like, I like quarterly, um, and some of that's because the way I plan, and some of that's because the things I do, and it allows me to have a little bit of consistency, but also be adaptable as necessary. So I agree, though, because if you get a new player in the marketplace mm. and you don't update your business plan, right, then that'll be on the con side for sure. Mm-hmm. But what we're talking about here is it allows you to strategically stay on top of your game. It allows right. you to keep going. And, and lean into things that are going to separate you from that new competition. I'm I'm smiling as you're talking and, and agree with everything, <laughs> but I'm no I'm smirking because I'm like, um, you know, we're going to become the show that just leaves you confused. <laughs> <laughs> very possible, yes, very possible. Right, like, oh, great, this is, uh, it's a topic I want to hear about it. Here's seven reasons why you should do this, but here's seven reasons why you shouldn't. Uh, what do I do? Right, so right. this is well, and I listen. This plays back to our overriding statement. What's the one right. thing we always say? We're not here to be your guru, right? right. We want to share some information. We want to we want to get you get you thinking. Um, Challenge you a little bit. Right. Have you ask yourself some questions in terms of your ability to take action? Where do you where do you rate? What do you feel? Maybe create an opportunity for you for you to reaffirm right. your position. Right. Because a lot of us get into like Switzerland land right. with, with certain things. So maybe it now gives you a new perspective of clarity, um, not just confusion. <laughs> well, and and you know we could probably as we get better at this pros and cons yep. because that's where the confusion lies. As we get better at it, maybe sometimes we say, if this is you, correct, sure. and this is where, sure. but I think what it does is, or what, what our goal is, is for the people that are listening to this mm-hmm. to self-identify, this is where I land, right? and this is how it would benefit me, or on a con side, this is where I land, and maybe I need to reevaluate how I'm mm-hmm. doing it. So by providing, you know, a range, right. we give people an opportunity to self-identify. No, I like it. I like it a lot. Voice of reason. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, Good to okay. be back. We like it. <laughs> um, improved decision-making. Yes. Talk about this. So if you are obviously updated and are using updated data, then that obviously creates an opportunity for you to have more informed decisions. Right. And to, to, to kind of weigh in on that process. So you don't have, because we've talked about being decisive versus indecisive. Right. And the fact of the matter is decisive is better. Right? Even though we did the pros and cons, 
So if you can shorten the learning curve because you're already up to speed, right. that becomes the, the, the idea. And it creates an opportunity for you to set realistic goals based on current trends and performance. Yes. And when you regularly update your business plan, a pro to that is, is it forces you to evaluate how you define success. And when you have a clear definition of success, you now have a filter for decision-making. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, is if you have, as long as you continue to keep that updated, and it doesn't mean it has to change. It just means you keep it updated. It means that every question or every decision you have to make is, is this going to get me closer to the way I define success? Right. Then I move forward. I don't have to think about it. I right. just move forward. Or is this going to get me further away from the way I define success? Mm -hmm. And then that answer is no. Right. So it gives you clarity in the ability to make decisions, which is an episode we had not too long ago. But what it does is it speeds it up for you too. So by regularly updating this business plan, the pro is, is your business is better and you're clearer and you can move faster. I like it. Number three. Oh, there's another one. All right. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of them. There's a lot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stop based on time, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so financial management. Yes. So obviously business plans have projections. Yes. Um, so this is an opportunity to keep financial projections and budgets accurate. Also gives you an opportunity to relook from a cost savings. Right. Or, you know, investment perspective. Right. And I think this is an interesting one, too, because a lot of times when we talk about costs, right. you ask that question, people don't necessarily have the answer. Right. Now, you know, if they're in the, maybe if they're in the financial services business or that is their kind of profession or trade, right. Right, I expect an accountant to know his costs. Right. But you don't necessarily expect the leadership consultant. Right. Or, you know, the person, you know, maybe they're, you know, running a, a traditional brick and mortar mm -hmm. um, where they're not necessarily, I mean, you know, maybe cost of goods or certain aspects, but mm -hmm. it's not right there. So having that, how do you know where you're going if you don't know where you are or, you know, right. that type of thing? Yeah. And, and Corey, you know, like we, we both have a strong sales background and a long history of sales. Mm -hmm. And we know that in the sales world, you project based on deals that you think you're going to close. Right. And so by regularly updating your business plan, you can evaluate, are those deals still realistic? Yeah. Are those opportunities that you're looking at, are they still part of your revenue? Mm -hmm. And and if they are, then great. And if they're not, then you have the ability to adjust then and not right. wait until it's too late. Mm -hmm. 100%. I like it. Ooh. Next. Will yeah. the church say amen? You know? <laughs> Will H a little slow on the gun there. I was trying to give him an opening. There you go. <laughs> I was giving him an opening. Okay. We're moving right along. We're moving. <laughs> well, sometimes we're it's moving. like that echo option on your car. Uh -huh. You know where your car is idling, they'll go they'll flip to echo. And then when you oh, yes. and then when you step yes, on the it, gas, yeah, it, starts it to takes get, a yeah. second to get yeah, going. Yeah. I mean, not everybody has that feature, uh, Lon. <laughs> But we are moving along. <laughs> the German versions do. Yeah, the German. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I was letting you know I was going to put your business in the street, but you know. <laughs> well, you so, drive so German I too. Know, so. But you know, eh, you know. So, um, okay. <laughs> a lot. Did I say a, no? Wait. <laughs> we just finished off. number three. Oh, we did number three. Okay, yeah. four. Alignment with business goals. So now it ensures all team members are working towards the same objectives and it helps in realigning strategies and tactics with the overall plan. Yes. Cause right. The plan changes, particularly if you're in a team environment, right? You are, right. you are, you are the leader of a team. If the objective changes or the strategy changes, right. You know, that needs to be updated in a way that people can get on the same proverbial page. Well, right. And, and as you update that, if you communicate that to your team mm. in a way that they know what, what you've updated and what your changes are and what the plan is, you give them the freedom to go out and be maximally effective as well. Because now if you completely change a target audience or mm -hmm. you change a client or, or there's a market that no longer serves you and you make changes, you can talk to the members of your team and have them also either get away from, stop targeting a market or right. start targeting a new market. And you can give them the ability to be 
almost self-sustaining now, I guess and self-sufficient. Though that there's a little bit of like crisscross here because that may be like your marketing plan, mm, maybe okay. not your total business. I mean, but good point, right? In terms of that, so that that there may be an adjustment almost to to its own like SOP for us for from a standpoint yeah, of the uh, yep, operating okay. procedure, but kind right. of that overarching business plan, right? Um, mar- where marketing is an element. Correct. So that does fit, you know, right. what you're talking about there. But it just made me that just popped in my head. So you know, maybe it's a detail thing. So maybe the the business plan aspects of marketing becomes more high level, right? And then now you can use the individual SOP for the marketing department or the marketing Correct. team to go deeper into that adjustment. Yeah, well said. Yep. But I get nothing. You get you're getting everything. That <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what kind of nonsense he this missed is. me. Yeah, no, well, he, yeah, is that what it is? Oh, okay. I got bubkis. <laughs> he moved his hand over there and did nothing. So you got nothing. You got nothing. Okay. All right. Next up. <laughs> if you guys know anybody who's uh, good at production, uh, <laughs> now accepting resumes. <laughs> the Grow Business Podcast is updating his business plan. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. Must be good with pushing the buttons. Hit the uh, buttons. Well. Exactly. There he comes. Okay. One on five. Okay. Look at this. Look at that. It's like now, shifting gears. Now we got, you know, 15 on the back end. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a false sense of completion. Right. Here. That's all right. All right. Um, risk management. Yes. So obviously, you know, identifying potential risks, allowing for the de- development of mitigation strategies. Yes. And navigating also, you know, economic downturns, uh, industry disruptions. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people now, you know, down in Florida got hit by those floods. Right. Complete game changer to their business. Right. Yeah, you, know, you can't open because, you know, you, you can't wade through the water to get there. That's right. that's crazy. So that's just that's things that, you know, you necessarily didn't know. Um, you know, economic downturns. Nobody wants to hear about or think about economic downturns, but these are the, you know, situations that we're in and depending mm-hmm. on what side of the fence, right? It's just, I mean, even if you go back to, you know, that thing that tied us up for a few years, <laughs> um, you had people who thrived. Correct. Right place, right time, right situation. Mm-hmm. You know, you ran a lab. Right. You know, I had a client that thought they, you know, their original game plan prior to that thing was they were going to do $3 million a year. That was their goal for their lab. Right. And that thing came. And they were doing that a month. Right. Like, yeah. you know, good problem to have. I should have been on a rev share uh, <laughs> consulting. Yeah, yeah I should have been fee based. I should have been right. revenue based. Uh, I, I might not be here doing the grow business podcast <laughs> right now. I might be on one of those vacations that, that you talked about. You would be doing it from, uh, from yeah, Lago. Yeah, so. maybe. <laughs> yeah, from the number one. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, and, yeah, yeah, go ahead. What's your well, thoughts? You know, so. To your point, it allows you to adapt, to adjust for both, right? It allows you to adjust for things that are going to create headwinds in your business or change your ability to be successful. Mm. It also allows you, by updating your business plan regularly, it allows you to, to recognize and capture opportunities that present themselves that didn't exist when you first started your business right. plan or when you first started your business. Right. Yeah. No, 100% there. Um, and just being prepared. I mean, so many people got caught, like right. not, not prepared in that situation where they could have pivoted, but didn't, Right. you know, you know, in the restaurant that's like, oh, I'll do online ordering when I feel like it. Right. Yeah. How'd that work out? Yeah. You know, now you, now everybody was racing to it. Right. Okay. We are at the last point on pros. On the pros. And okay. then we're going to flip the con. So last one is, you know, just plain old fashioned operational efficiency, Right identifying opportunities and areas for improvement and keeping your operations aligned with the business strategies of the day. Right. Right. So you might be a lot of people, you know, let's from a marketing standpoint or their original business business plan, like, you know, TikTok didn't exist when they wrote the original business plan. Right. So some of those things weren't even factors. They weren't things you do. You couldn't advertise on Hulu. You know, you had to, simply you know do your regular tv station or, or or that type of thing so you've got those new opportunities there from an efficiency standpoint a reallocation of budget those types of things yeah and and on the other side of that too Corey, is sometimes 
updating your business plan doesn't mean you have to change it. Mm. It means that you evaluate it. And sometimes by evaluating your business plan, you can make decisions that allow you to say, well, that new technology is great, but it doesn't align with what I'm trying to accomplish. Right. So it allows you to make an effective decision. To look at things, say no or yes. Say yes or no. And you have a filter, again, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to run it through to see if that makes sense. Yeah. Does it make sense to change lanes or does it make sense to stay in my lane? Yeah, that make that. Yes. Yes to all that, as you, would, as you would say. As you would say, yes to all of yes that. Yes to all of it, right? Yes, it's, a, it's a blanket yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Good. That's it. We're done for the day. No, oh, let's do it. We're going to do Because <laughs> like, right, so like decision making, there are very little cons. Yeah, we, we've, talked, right, we've talked about that. And, and what I like about this is it really is, it's not telling somebody what to do. Right. Right. But it's it's an organized way to make better decisions right. and and weigh some of those things. Right. You know, I was having conversations with Willie H the other day, and I said, you know, you got to put the Ben Franklin to it, baby. You got to <laughs> draw that line down the middle, get right. your left and your right, and then and then see what that looks like. Right. You know, see see how that aids in the decision making to create clarity because that's what we're all after. I mean, day to day from a business perspective, you've got a million things coming at you. Right. Um, Particularly things that take you off of the, you know, some weird stuff going on this morning. I thought the, the, the mercury was in retrograde or whatever that means. <laughs> I thought that was having just some weird stuff going on this right. morning. Like first thing in the morning, right. that was crazy. So, and and if I can add one yeah, other thing to that, Corey, you know the the ability to evaluate your business plan in clarity, and what that means is is you're looking at it when you're not in the middle of your yeah. business, yeah. the ability to look at it and say, okay, this makes sense. This doesn't, we talk so much. We talk often about the emotional component to business mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and by doing it on a regularly scheduled update, whether it's quarterly, biannually, annually, however you do it, yep. it allows you to look at it and make some logical, reasonable decisions about what's on that plan mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that when you have to make decisions in the heat of battle or in the heat of, I need to be responsive or I need to act quickly. You can refer to that right. as the filter without having to be emotionally attached to that filter. Yeah. All true. Voice of <laughs> a double voice. For, I know you better have something for me coming up soon. <laughs> All right, <laughs> now we're gonna now let's hop. We're gonna hop to cons now. Okay, I'm gonna package the first two together. Okay, because I think they blend in. Um, so this is con. So now, folks, we are going to be talking about cons regarding updating your business plan and looking at the business plan. What are some of the cons to that? Because we talked about the pros. So I'm gonna put one and two together, and that is time consuming. Okay. Yes. And resource intensive yes so you know trying to update these things doing regular updates can be a significant amount of time and effort also can divert attention from day-to-day operations and may require a button hook it with this with number two and may require additional resources yes. so you may need to work with consultants or people uh, specialized or specialized software to do this right and you know cost with modernizing right and all truth um you know can add up right and all of that is true yes that's all i got <laughs> i mean i could go i could i could i could add to that but there's really nothing to add yeah, I, was, I was taking a break <laughs> <laughs> yes uh next question yes all of it <laughs> <laughs> okay i mean I, yes to a certain extent it's self-explanatory right so unless yeah. there's like a unique story associated with that um you know i i think and i'm all for doing what you do or you know i'm not knocking anybody's what what people charge what they don't charge get your value get your you know get your money i mean you know don't kind of gouge people like in in that kind of sense right you know um you know there's a it's a heat wave and there's a water shortage and now you know a bottle of poland springs twelve dollars like that's not Right, but that's not what I'm thinking about. But right. when I think about this idea of the resources, right, I think about when a company spends, you know, an inordinate amount of money to change their logo, right, or or like you know they've got 
focus groups for their right. tagline. Right. I don't. I mean, I don't know. Is I don't know if that's a millions of dollars endeavor. But when sometimes that's the experience, and then right. you look at what the change was, right? And like I think I'm not certain. I'm almost certain. Mm-hmm. I'm not certain, but I'm almost certain. Right. Because we were driving by our driving by our shopping center the other day, and there's a Wells Fargo branch there. And I said to my wife, "I think that's a new sign." Mm. And we thought about it because maybe we never paid attention. And the more we looked at it, and right. kind of coming back the other way, she's like, "I think it is just a new way to spell Wells Fargo." Okay. And I'm just imagining in my head. Right. How much money, how many iterations that went through right. to come up with, you know, how the W will be shaped. Right. The woo woo W. Yeah, the woo woo W. <laughs> and then right. how much money it is to produce those signs right. when you have a gajillion branches. Right. And how much it's going to cost. Now I guess, oh Corey, jobs in the economy. Right. Somebody had to design it. Right. Somebody had to there's a some a sign manufacturer that's gonna right. make it. Then there's going to be a crew that goes out. So I guess you're creating jobs. I won't knock that. Right. But that new sign changes nothing about the way I feel about that bank, positive and negative. Right. Well, and and look, there's Wells Fargo has been in the news a lot the last few years. So there's, you know, many times for all the wrong reasons. Well, and well, not being on. Don't mess with my autograph (laughs) uh, credit card. Y'all give me my points. (laughs) No trouble. Right. No trouble. (laughs) Well, not, you know, not being in the rooms where they're making those decisions. What the point of this conversation though is, and we get back to the foundation of evaluating your business plan. Yep. Somebody looked at their business plan and said, in order for us to be successful in the way that we need to be successful, we need to rebrand. And then part of rebranding is new signage. Well, and and the (laughs) the casualty of that is, is that the one over by the shopping center that you're talking about Mm -hmm. Well, the one that's up the street that I drive by to get here right. is closed. Right. Yes. They're gone completely. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. So they close that branch yeah. Yeah. and they're a new sign rebranding the it the other one. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a new bank coming there. Oh, the one here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, new bank. So, yeah. um, oh, Willie H sent me the correction uh, on the Jim Ziegler book that we were talking about. The title is So You're a Professional Speaker. How come you're not rich yet? <laughs> it sounds that just like, the title. Yeah, that's sounds like Jim Ziegler yeah. HSG yep. right there. Yep. <laughs> 100%. Okay. We're going to do uh, back, number three. Back, back to the cons yeah. of regularly about updating yep. your business. Plan. Yeah, I didn't forget. <laughs> no, we're just I'm resetting it for, <laughs> oh, okay. for, for the people that... The people are, that just came in at like 32 minutes into the podcast. For the people that get lost in the Wells Fargo story and forgot why we're here today. <laughs> why we're here, yeah. Because <laughs> so, somebody's got a Wells Fargo story. Well, 100%. You know, I have them. My grandmother was in that whole mysterious credit card opening thing that they yeah. got you know so yeah we all have kind of a story but again uh i like my points so uh <laughs> shout out to the autograph right. uh wells right. fargo card. Right. 100%. yeah yeah <laughs> don't y'all cancel me okay number three <laughs> number three <laughs> number three over analysis yes There's a high potential in this situation for over uh, overanalyzing right. and getting caught up into too much granular details because we business plan high level, right? High level right. strategy structure, and then you can right. you know sub 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 that out or get into your you know deeper subject matter expertise um, on each of these areas. So you know you're overanalyzing, and then of course the famous analysis paralysis that's right. that's in, and then now we're off to deci- uh, indecisive ville. Correct. Yeah. yeah, and and this one, Corey. I mean, this is this is a great opportunity for if this is you, right? If this is you, if you're listening to this and you spend an inordinate amount of time evaluating your business mm-hmm. plan, and mm-hmm. you know, some people call it shiny object syndrome. You can call it whatever you want. The way that that becomes, uh, it it does become unproductive for you mm-hmm. and for your business. Mm-hmm. And what it also does is it, it, the con, other con of this is, is the people in your business and on your team don't know what's important to you. Yeah. So if you're always doing that and always making changes. Why aren't you leading in the four? Because you were you're, you're headed right there. So I'm going to continue to give you that runway. Because well, four, f- right. four is a resistant to change. And the idea that by doing this, right. you know, you may be shaking up some things um, with the employees, creating right. pushback in that situation. Right. You know, whereas where frequent updates can create uncertainty and instability. Well, a hundred percent. Because if you're always making changes, yeah. why should I invest 
as an employee or a member of your team, if you're always making changes, why should I spend a whole lot of time embracing this one? Because I know another one's coming. Yeah, well, I think, <laughs> well, don't go describe, I think you're, uh, you know, you're getting a little close uh, to oh, home. Oh, am I? Okay, well, that's not what I meant. Because, uh, Willie H is definitely going to have to do something he doesn't even know about yet. Lord have <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there definitely is, uh, uh, definitely new things on the horizon. Right. Uh, but well, no, but no, we, I understand what you're we, saying. We talk, yeah, well, yeah, let's clearly. go back to I, I talk a lot about confidence, right? Yeah. This Whether, is the part where Lon Graham cleans up his statement that uh, <laughs> that he's concerned may have offended me. No, I'm just so, kidding. So, <laughs> so in, in summary, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think though, what you know, what I think and what I talk a lot about is confidence, and we've had com- mm. conversations about confidence in your clients, confidence yeah. in your leadership confidence in, in the people that you work mm-hmm, with. Mm-hmm. And so if you are making changes to your business plan a lot, right, regularly and regularly, meaning often and regularly, the people on your team and the people in your organization can lose confidence in you. Yeah. So that becomes a con mm-hmm. to doing this all the time. Right. And maybe the way, and, and I'll supplant that by, or I'll add to that by saying, if this sounds like you, then create some space between your regularly scheduled business plan evaluations. Yeah. And I think it's, and I think how you communicate that is also effective. You know, I tell a story in my presentations. Um, the short version is, 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 is we, I use an analogy of, you know, experiencing turbulence. Yeah. When an airplane experiences turbulence, um, the pilot doesn't turn around and go back to the location you came from. Right. The pilot doesn't go, you know what? we got turbulence. Uh, well, I know we're headed to Vermont, but uh, we're in Jersey now. We're just going to set her down right. and see what happens. Right. Um, what they do, though, is they adjust. Correct. Right. What starts happening, you know, they start driving. They just start trying to find better altitude, right. smoother air, as they say. Right. But they still go towards the destination. So right. your destination, your end game from the overall attitude of the business plan still holds true. But there right. may be some, there obviously can be some adjustments. There can be some right. turbulence. And you're trying to work that out. and. You know, the part is when you're trying to work it out, it's not fun, no. <laughs> right? Being in turbulence, when, when we're bouncing around right. and that thing's dropping and you can't, you know, and it's, and it's doing this thing, right. not fun at all. You no. know, once it's over, Hey, you know, five minutes later, you're, you know, back to watching Netflix. Right. Or you're back to, you know, your specific targeted marketing on the TV. At right. Night exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. When the church say, amen. That's such a great right. example though, Corey, is that you keep going and you figure out how to smooth it out. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. All right. Number five, you create a potential for short term focus. Okay. Right. So these regular updates right. might be designed to adjust your short term gains okay. rather than reflecting your long term vision. Right. So you create a situation of you know changing these priorities now dilutes the business's core objectives. Yes. Yeah. And it goes back to something you said earlier mm-hmm. in this episode when you talk about investments. Yep. Are you making are you only making investments mm-hmm. in the short term because you're looking at because your business plan is so short sighted. Well, and I'll tell you where I see this most more, more frequently. Okay. And I and I glean this from my coaching clients. Right. It's very common is they will get a singular piece of feedback or something singularly will happen, whether plus or minus. Right. And then they will view that as some kind of sign that they're supposed to, you know, expand that or go deeper in that or create a whole new product or right. whatever. You know, oh, well, you know, somebody asked me for X, Y, Z today. And, you know, we really don't do that. But I said I would do it for them. Maybe we should make that part of the, you know, maybe that should become a whole nother product line. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, or somebody complained about X, let's shut this whole thing off because right. one person had a problem. Right. Well, yeah. and that, and that's that force for the that's trees no. example, right? I mean, you stand in front of a tree, all you can see is the tree. Right. And all you got, and, and that was breakthrough advice there. <laughs> <laughs> Timeless, <laughs> sensational. <laughs> well, the, you know, it, and the hard part, especially for small business owners or solopreneurs, right, mm. is 
you are scratching and clawing and trying right. so hard right. often just to get to the next deal, mm-hmm. especially early on in your business. Yeah. Or if you've just made a decision to invest in something that requires some, some short-term success mm-hmm. so that you can keep investing in it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that and it goes back to the emotional piece of it, right? Right. If you create regular schedule opportunities to reevaluate your business plan, then you can get into a place where you remove the emotion and use your business plan as a guide so that you can say, well, does that thing that somebody asked me for make sense for us? Right. Well, if it does, great. If it doesn't, yeah. it's okay. Because go back to your target audience. Go back to the people and really lean in to the people that you're actually trying to do business with or actually want to right. do business it's, it's, it's a great way to lose sight of that too. And, you right. know, and number six is complexity. So mm. also that regularity of the updating, you know, does it, cre- does it create complexity? Are you, are you actually um, working to streamline and become more effective right. or are you just stacking? Right. Right. You know, and, and, right. and, and, or are you really uh, working that so it doesn't become, you know, cumbersome. So, um, you've got complexity and then I'm just going to go ahead and do the last one, which is, which is interesting. It's the idea of getting a false sense of security. (laughs) So regular updates now, right. Create this false sense of control and predictability, right. Um, which can lead to over-reliance on the plan, right. Rather than adapting to unforeseen circumstances dynamically. I like to show SWAT that's on CBS. And they, uh, as they're pulling up to the location, they say two things. One, stay liquid right. and keep your head on a swivel. Right. Right. So, yeah. And I love, those, I love those two things because it's so true in the marketplace. Right. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, what you're talking about here, Corey, with, with six and seven is, is, especially with six and complexity, is, is what you're doing helping or hurting your business. And, and, and. The more contract or detract. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And the more complex you make it, Mm -hmm. the harder it is. So the the more likely you are to hurt it and the more likely you are to detract from your business. Well, there it is. We did it. (laughs) (laughs) We got her done. As my Virginia friends say, (laughs) fantastic. Get her done. (laughs) That is right. Well, good. I mean, I'm, we're going to leave it there. I think I think we got it, and I think certainly um, we've given some perspective. Yeah. And there's some thoughts there that, that go along with that. And um, hopefully it will lead to better decision-making. Now, the key here is, Corey, I don't have a business plan. <laughs> <laughs> Aha! That's, good Aha! That's a good place to start. That might be a, a first start. Now, yeah. there's our, again, Go on the internet, tell you everything. Yo, oh, I don't need a business plan. Now, my belief system on this is the dynamics of a business plan, I think, are different. Correct. The formality of a business plan has fluidity based on the context of its use. And what I mean by that is I'm in the franchising business. Right. We're franchisees. And part of the, you know, purchase, shout out to Pecan Jack. Uh, <laughs> shout out. You're on YouTube, uh, you see it. There you go. Um, the complexity of that is typically you're relying on the SBA. Right. Or an SBA uh, a loan, 7A loan, for the bulk of the financing to purchase the franchise. Right. So now in that essence, that bank, that lender for the SBA certification does require a more formal business plan. Correct. Then, you know, we will win. (laughs) (laughs) Right. It it requires more form. So, so now you, in that instance, you, you know, you should be hiring a professional to work on those things um, and have a more formal sense. Right. You're on your own. And I mean, on your own, but you know, you're, you're starting your own thing from scratch. You're self-funding or, you know, you've got angel, you know, investors or friends and family or mm-hmm. you're, you, you opened up a, you know, truest credit card. You're going to run the business on that. <laughs> right. Like, well, whatever. Right. I mean, that, that's right. the ball game. Right. Maybe you've got a line of credit, a, a, a HELOC from your home or, right. or whatever. Um, you don't necessarily have to say, you know, you need to write down what's supposed to happen, how it's supposed to happen, how you're going right. to run the business. But if you're not incumbent to someone, right, right if the information is more internal, then it, you know, 
I don't know that it needs to have the executive summary and right. uh, bullet point one, one point one, one point three mm-hmm. down the you know section seven or eight. Right. So I that's just the perspective I would have, right? The, right. the formality dictates, but you want to have some. I always use the thirteen year old rule. I say if if a thirteen year old can't understand your business, it's too complicated. Oh, interesting. Okay. You know. Yeah. Um, Good. There's too much going on at that point. So. Right. All right. Any last words before we get out of here? <laughs> no, just, you know, what we say every week is thanks for coming. Yes. And thanks for coming back. Absolutely. And next time, bring a friend. Like, share, <laughs> bring a friend. That is right. And, you know, we're going to be here next week for you. If you have not visited the new CoreyMosley.com, you need to do that. Um, we are helping people all over the country get positioned for growth. That is our our keynote, that is our mission, that is our presentation, that is our training. So if you're looking for an assessment on your business, if you want to get positioned for growth, you have concerned about becoming stuck, stalled, or stagnant in your business, and you want some proven strategies and some support to modernize your business, uh, that's the place to go. Head over to CoreyMosley.com. Otherwise, we're going to get out of here. This has been another episode of the Grow Business Podcast. I'm Corey Mosley. He's LG007. And for Willie H., we're out of here. And I'll see you next week. Take us out. The pros and the cons. Should I? Should I not? You know, what I, should I do? I, I like it. Yeah. A lot. I like the pros and the cons a lot because it does it gives balance. It's like make your own decision. Right. Ultimately. And I think what we want to make sure, um, not what we want to make sure, what we want the listeners to do. Yep is to actively ask this question. Mm, yes. Is this me? Yes. Yeah. And I think that's really, because the pros and the cons, you're going to land somewhere. Correct. The question you're that you want to... You've got one philosophy. You know, no strategy is a strategy. Right, exactly. <laughs> and so you're going to land somewhere. The question yeah. is, is where do you land? And that's, that's right. what we want you to be able to identify is where do I land in this? 100%. We've done it again. Great show. Great that's job. Good. Yeah, thank you.